Hey guys, welcome back to The Firo, your wormhole from TradFi to DeFi. Um, in today's video, right, we're going to talk about, again, the return of Andre Cronier. I think I pronounced that right this time. Yes. And what he recently said in a series of latest blog posts. Hello guys, as usual, nothing of what we say in this video should be taken as financial advice. If you actually need financial advice, please, please speak to a pro. So we talked about this before, right? Um, a few weeks ago, in fact, not even a month, I think, that Andre Cronier left DeFi. Supposedly, just through a series of tweets, not even by him, by his co-founder. And um, MJ, could you give us a little bit of a uh, refresher of what exactly happened? Okay, so uh, what happened was that uh, after this thing called Sifu Gate, mm. uh, which was concocted by the guys at Time Wonderland, um, he was a little bit, whether that was the cause or that was the trigger, mm. um, but basically he was very uh, demotivated to build in DeFi anymore. Uh, mm. So again, for context, you guys can watch the video that we put in the, uh, in the cards about who Andre Korean is, but he's one of the biggest builders in DeFi. And because of what happened, he just wanted to quit. Mm. And he went silent for maybe a couple of months. After that, uh, he came up with a blog post, uh, essentially with a bombshell review of now he thinks crypto should be regulated or rather to be specific and technical mm. he believes in this thing called regulated crypto okay he's joined the dark side it seems like yes so uh, some people are you know calling him a traitor some people are heavily disagreeing with him and yeah and why he believes that and maybe i'll i'll, I'll just uh, read it out right is that mm. he is very against crypto culture and he wants to introduce something new and that's why he thinks uh, regulations can be useful. So this is just an excerpt from his blog post. I'll link it in the description as well. Right? Yes, uh, I've been uh, I've long been vocal of my disdain for crypto culture and my love for crypto ethos. Reading that might sound weird, but crypto ethos is concepts like self sovereign rights, self custody, self empowerment. Mm. Crypto culture is concepts like wealth, entitlement, enrichment, and ego. So I see, man. So that is mm. essentially what's uh, what's what's happening in in brief la, and, and it's uh, it's quite shocking. You know, if it c comes from some random, if it came if it came from us or some random guy, it wouldn't really be an issue. But yeah. it coming from Andre, Andre, or uh, so called in the last video we mentioned, he's like the one of the core builders of DeFi as we know it today. Yeah. Right, he started Yen uh, Yen Finance, and when I mean, you can dig into the rabbit hole on your own, right now. Uh, I I you sent me the article yesterday. I yep. checked it out. I read it through. Uh, but I felt like it. It was very, for me, it was very blur. I know you delve much deeper into it. Why would you say, why is regulated crypto an issue uh, for a lot of people in DeFi? Yeah, it's it's all against the idea of, uh, see, there's, there's, there's two versions of the pioneer spirit of crypto. Mm. Uh, they are like the same, but they are at different wavelengths. So the pioneer spirit is the ones that um, promoted by people who are supporters of Satoshi Nakamoto. They want to be outside the purview. They want to be outside the controls of the central banking system and the fiat system, right? So that uh, spirit is a very intellectual one. It's a very philosophical one. Uh, but what has happened, especially with DeFi summer from my point of view, is that the group of people that has come into crypto uh, is taking that way of thinking of philosophy and becoming more, let's call it degen about it. And it's all about making money, being rebellious. Mm. And in some extreme cases, though this is obviously not the majority, um, you know, rugging people, yeah. right? Because it's a cowboy town. So that, that spirit is anti-establishment, mm. but there are different ways to go about being anti-establishment, right? Okay. So the first pioneer way is the Satoshi Nakamoto way, right? To really build something that's everlasting, not a scam. Then there's the other way of either scamming other people or uh, not, or rather taking advantage of scams. Yeah. You if know, it, it ain't 9,000 percent API, it did nothing, right? <sighs> exactly, we've been exactly. There, we've all been there. Yep. Now, I think um, 
what do you think Andre's next step could be based on uh, his latest, latest articles? Yeah, again, he's vague about it and mm. the articles are quite short, but they're yeah. still quite information packed at least. Uh, but you have to read in between the lines. Uh, he is very optimistic. Um, I would say he's very keen to build mm. or help build, help advise, maybe even help mentor governments build sovereign or regulated crypto blockchains. Yeah. So again, uh, there's a difference between crypto regulation and regulated crypto. So that's the thing that I was really blur about in the article, yeah. right? Yeah. That, that, yeah. that is the distinction that I think is important to be made. Lah. Yes. Regulations correct. versus crypto regulation. Yeah, regulations. so crypto regulations is what uh, all these boomers who have not really dealt much into yeah. crypto will say, right? They want to regulate Bitcoin, they want to regulate DeFi, they want to regulate all this. Mm. Uh, obviously coming from the industry, Andre knows that that's not possible. However, the, the regulated crypto means is that right from the beginning, when they create the blockchain, uh, people should already know this is a regulated entity that has laws where all the founders are dogs. Yeah. And with, ironically, blockchain being public, then people can, you know, put to task, you know, different, different members, got it, got it. you know, okay. building the blockchain. So this is more for, for countries, lah, right? Yeah. Yeah, so the functions functions like multi six, you know, you know, transaction hashes and whatnot, all can be applied to a regulated entity as well. Okay, got it, got it. Now, I I have my personal opinion yep. on on his uh, this this coming out of Andre after a month or so. Uh, but what do you personally think about this? I think it's uh, I think it's a step in the right direction, and I think we were discussing this, uh, you know, preparing for the video that mm. uh, it's a coming of age for crypto. I think. Crypto has gone past the, the kiddie stage. It is now in the teenage stage, right? And um, for it to mature as an asset class, yeah. it needs to start interacting with regulators, start interacting with sovereign sovereign nations, right? Mm. And their governments uh, and not bring in that old attitude. You know, you don't bring, I guess, the beliefs and the way of thinking that you had when you were a teenager you know, into adulthood, yeah. right? You might bring parts of it, right? The, the whole idea of discovery, pioneer spirit, innovation that we should bring in. But the degen part is probably where there needs to be some form of reduction. And also the acceptance that, uh, you know, Andre used, used a very, stated something very, very controversial um, where we need to move from trustless blockchains to trust-based blockchains. And so, the maintenance of a blockchain is no no more just you know uh, random anonymous people mm. it's uh, dogs around individuals. it's dogs and you know maybe even centralization is mm. uh, encouraged as a result and the proof ironically is in DeFi as well if you look at the chains that have done much better are uh, chains where what we call the uh, the Nakamoto coefficient which is just a mathematical measure of how decentralized a uh, blockchain is. Yeah. It, and, and the success stories are now in more centralized blockchains like your Lunas, your uh, Solanas, and your Phantom. That's a very good point, yeah. So, I mean, in DeFi alone really, people are caring less and less about decentralization mm. and people are thinking of profits. And yeah. for profits to happen, you need to create a long lasting uh, protocols and for that to happen, you need to have uh, really a driver, someone driving it, someone making sure that they don't, uh, you know, sway left and right. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I think I'm going to steal your quote, right? Yes, yeah, yes. You wrote, you wrote here for me, why regulation is important to pump your bags. Yeah. And I was just thinking about it on my drive home yesterday after our discussion. Yep. Uh, yeah, this is, right now you can still argue that we are still early because yeah. institutions haven't heavily participated into crypto yet. I mean, they're, they're basically just dipping their toes into crypto, having a few billions here and there, right? But as you mentioned, what's that again? The bond market, so the equity market is $50 trillion. Roughly. The bond market is three times of that. Yeah. And crypto right now is about $1.8 trillion. Yes. So opportunity to grow is, is, is abundant. And if regulation is in favor of it being, as you said, a bit more docs, a bit more centralized, which of course is uh, like toxic words for the crypto degen, yeah, right? Yeah. But it, if that's the case, right? If it does steer towards the direction that Andre wishes it to be, wouldn't that mean more trust based on some of these big funds, yep. governments, 
And wouldn't that technically mean some of our own bags get pumped? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so th- so that's that's something that's an eye-opening statement from your end that yeah. you shared with me yesterday, la. You any more thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, you, you just you you think about it, right? Uh, there are ten million active DeFi wallets. It, it probably shrunk over the past few months because things have been crashing. Mm. Um, but there's let's say there's ten million active DeFi wallets. Yeah. But that doesn't mean there are ten million active DeFi users, right? Good point. Because how many wallets do you have? Four. Uh, exactly, <laughs> right? So let's say even if it's at 10 million active DeFi users, mm. that's only about 5% of total crypto wallets, which is roughly 200 million. But the key thing is that the people who believe in decentralization and have all these leanings, yeah. plus have the degen attitude, because not everybody who believes in decentralization have that degen attitude. Mm. They're probably here already. Everybody that needs to be here is already here, right? Yeah. So if you think about it, if everybody that needs to be here from the decentralized degen perspective is already here, where is the new liquidity coming in? It has to come from, unfortunately, normies, right? Quote unquote, right? And we don't mean that in a derogatory way. We just mean that people we just want to keep things simple. We have better things to do rather than degenerating in crypto 24 I mean, being normal is, a lot better it's sometimes. Underrated, right? Honest. It's underrated. So, and here's the thing: uh, the the number of normies probably outnumber the number of degens by a factor of hundred. Yeah, that point. How oh, and and once it's regulated, normies will come in, pension funds will come in, big funds and all that. Mm. So, uh, I see this. Uh, you know, to conclude, I see this as a move in the in the right direction, and it's a coming of age, and you know, change change is a hallmark of progress, right? And change usually has some sort of discomfort. And I think with this causing some sort of discomfort to, you know, fellow degens, let's call it, is the right thing to feel, right? It's the same feeling when you bought your first Bitcoin. Oh, what what if it's a scam? Mm. So now you're used to a certain way of doing things. Now the next step of evolution would be to feel this some sort of discomfort by dealing with regulated More entities. Growth. Yeah, yeah. You mean? I mean, I, I read the articles yesterday, uh, and I went to bed feeling a little bit. I was I was disappointed, right, at like how much has changed over Andre's tone. But I woke up and reviewing this this whole uh, topic we're going to talk about today with a little bit more acceptance, a little bit more understanding, and I think a lot of DeFi people, myself included, feel like crypto is ours to own, right? But it's not. Yeah. It is a public somewhat of a public asset. Everyone yeah. should have a share in it. I mean, that's the whole philosophy of Satoshi Nakamoto anyway, right? Um, in part, yeah. I would highly recommend people go check out the blog post. I think it's uh, as cryptic as it is. It's also very poetic. Uh, you probably need a few reads to understand it. But uh, any more final thoughts, MJ? Nope, that's oh, it. Okay. Guys, if you enjoyed the video today, please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell. And we'll see you in the next video.